Now longtime viewers might know a few key things about me. First, even though it's rather large for an intestinal parasite, I've learned to love it like a child. I, I mean, I kind of have to because I can hear it talk to me. Secondly, I've grown out my hair in an effort to hide a fully nude Morgan Fairchild tattoo I got in a Russian labor camp. I don't even know who Morgan Fairchild is. And finally, I fell in love with HEA Design's design aesthetic when I reviewed The Poison back in 2017. Was I poisoned by the poison? Yeah. <laughs> we guess we have fun here, huh, guys? So now in the year of our Locust 2022, Sam has tweaked and detantified the slicker than a horse pill look of the antidote and poison and created the venom and the elixir. Now he asked if I wanted to review one, and I said yes. And uh, I guess he can feel free to use the blurb slicker than a horse pill in his promotional materials. Since I went with the milled out design of the poison last time, I decided on the clean look of the elixir this time. Will I be cured? <laughs> Where'd everyone go? Uh, oh, anyway, now for those that get their drinking time in while watching these videos, let's try and keep this straight. The poison was updated to the venom. Those have the crop circle things on them, and the antidote begot the elixir. And the elixir is seen here in my updated and hopefully it makes review shorter dimension segment. Although I'm sure the viewers and myself love the twists and turns of my flowery prose though. Another thing is you'll notice it took me years to perfect the technology to get all the dimensions on one screen, but I managed to keep at least one of the blue lines. Had to kill the whole graphics department, as in pa 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 pa. Now the Venom and Elixir are going to come in two colorways each. I use the Future Tench because I'm working on this review ahead of time and the knives are not live yet. I think that's May 31st. You can buy them starting June 7th, 2021 for $269, which is, I believe, the retail for the original Poison. Each will have a limited run of 50 pieces, just uh, I think like the Falcon did, and I reviewed that last year. Although the Falcon I have doesn't seem to be available, there's still three other varieties though. So if you didn't get it, I hope you have the FOMO. I have the FOMO all the time. Now you don't see a ton of Tantos on this channel, frankly, because I don't trust them or their prying tips too much. Every time Spyderco and Benchmade improves the design of one of their classic knives with the Tanto, I die a little inside. And uh, with any luck, it's probably part of the tapeworm. Or his proper name, William, as he uh, communicated to me, just, just don't call him Bill. Now being the exception to my no Tanto rule, I bought the original Poison feel and the Tanto was well integrated into the design of the knife. You know, the compound grind, the little circle, that stuff. However, it is a nice change that Sam decided upon the cleaner, looking spear point for the update here. The details on the S35 VN blade are nice, like the contoured spine. It's like rounded there, look at that. There's a lack of a visible plunge line, like the prior version. Now, plunge is a, always a word I forget that I can remember. Sorry, I'm not really a, a real knife bro. But that lack of a plunge line means that when the blade pivots, the tang moves flush with the bolster is a little little detail there. Blade play is non-existent, although because of my fidgeting tendencies I did have to tighten the pivot once as it loosened and affected blade centering. Make sure you have a good set of torque screws like a Weha, Weha, I don't know how you say it, I just read it. I wouldn't call the Elixir a super slicer out of the box, it was just a decent amount of sharp but good for general everyday carry purpose stuff. The lockup and deployment. The original Poison and Antidote are pretty stiff on their lockups. Cold Steel doesn't do little baby frame locks, but I'm sure they nodded approvingly and then said something kind of like, You kind of remind me of myself, boy, before I was banging chicks. I heard from a few of the Titanium Boutique Knife Bros that didn't like that stiff lockup, though. My guess is Sam was bludgeoned by the power of a thousand nip picks and... and was forced to make it slightly less badass. I'd observe the tension has been halved and it's much easier to disengage the lock now. I'd say it's a pretty good improvement. Don't get me wrong, it's not super easy, but it's a lot less stiff than the last version. Bearings and pivot are both smoother during close too. It's not like, you know, a drop shut, but a well-placed two or three wiggles makes it fall. The detent, like the original, is strong and you can't get it to open by flinging it downward. My guess is due to the pocket pecker posse, the flipper tab, they made it shorter and they rounded it. You know, I didn't mind the original much because it worked well with the design and apparently, unlike other people, I don't carry other things in my pocket that my $280 finely textured and anodized titanium jewelry also shares the space of. Some guys just, you know, throw in their Glock, their luxury car fob, their wallet, their pry bar money clip backup knife, 
all just in the same fucking pocket. Well, those guys now have two and a half more millimeters to work with. They're still tab jimping, but it's not offensive, and it doesn't bother me when I fidget. The handle, even though it's clean look, there's still a substantial amount of milling. Now this milling comes in the form of lots of fine diagonal surface texture, contoured and rounded handle slabs, internal milling for weight reduction on the inside of the handle, and the integrated holes in the handle and titanium backspacer that brings it all together with a place for your sick lanyard art, or your Apple uh, AirTag, LaVon. The handles on my particular version are blue anodized 6A14V titanium, also a favorite alloy of mine that has a subtle bead blasted stone wash. The color changes based upon the light and your filthy oily hands. I don't imagine it's quite as sensitive as the Swish Bowie, but uh, I really wouldn't know. You know, I'm really happy for everyone that got one. I, I truly am. The best part is I can finally forget the knife exists again, so. The pocket clip. The hardware is hidden like the original. It's not repositionable. Tip up, blade backward in the right pocket, or the stranger carry. Tip up, blade forward in the left pocket. The pocket clip is milled, and it's, you know, made from titanium like the rest of the knife, except for the blade, with the texture matching the body of the knife. It's got that fine diagonal texture. The look and basic feel between the poison and the elixir clip is the same. Not deep carry, has a medium-sized pocket feel, and you might remember, I'm not a person, you know, from a few paragraphs ago, who carries anything else in the pocket with a knife that has such a highfalutin finish. Comparisons. Now I've had four HEA designs now. I gave the front flipper Hunter to Pete. It's uh, down under now. <laughs> oh, you're all on your phone. I love that video. It was a good knife, but uh, you know, I still have these three. The Falcon is a great modern slip joint that does not look like many other slip joints. Sam knew a good slip joint needed an easy open and a crisp back spring, and this is that. And then the elixir and poison. I know art knife is a term reserved for handmade one-offs and something you might get at a park after dark. You know, art knives are like uh, Michael Walker's or Corrado Moro's. Of the two, I think I may prefer the detantled elixir to the poison. Although I do feel like I missed out on the green and, green and yellow and purple and yellow colorways of the poison and or antidote. But let's look at the pair of three. Very neutral handle. Very similar size to the elixir. Got a similar blade to handle length ratio. Handle's a little longer than the blade is. Probably because of backspacers or handle curves. The elixir has a more neutral grip though, so it's going to fit your hand a little bit better. Para 3 though is more fidgetable because of the compression lock. I think I can see some lube build up under the para scale. Wonderful. However, the paramilitary 2 is a little snappier, probably because of the slightly larger blade. I do prefer the paramilitary 2 over the para 3 because of the larger handle and it's more fidgetable. It snaps faster. How about the 941? I like the 941. I think, uh, you know, I should show it more. I don't know why I don't. Also a very fidgetable knife. It's hard to beat a good axis or compression lock if they're finely tuned and on the right knife. Very light, small in the pocket, snaps like a dream. We're going to wrap it up. I'm kind of picky when it comes to knife designers. A few of the designers that I like basically everything they come out with. Uh, the Hawks, even though they only have a few knives. Brian from Sharp by Design, literally every knife he makes is amazing. And then Sam from HEA Designs. Sam Listen, probably watch a ton of YouTube videos, which he'll never get that time back. And made some nice revisions to an already good design. It's a little small, but it's a good inoffensive work carry. I would like if Sam would bring back some of the greens and the purples, though. I miss those. Viewers know now that I'm not a tactical black knife kind of guy. For those new to HEA Designs, Sam is kind of uh, HEA Designs. He designs the knives and gets them made to his spec by an OEM. The knives are made internationally, and the quality is similar to a Riot or Wii or higher-end Best Tech. Throughout the knives I've had from him, they all do have a similar quality in manufacture, fit and finish, and quality control. Now thanks to Sam for donating this knife to the channel. I think it might be time for another giveaway soon to offset the things that are, you know, given to me. So follow me on Instagram where I give those things away. Say hi to the patrons. They're all, they're all really cool. Don't think any of them are murderers. I mean, there's definitely no serial killers, right? I don't attract that kind of audience. But they're all helping me on my 12 installments of my new iMac that I am editing this on and recording the new audio voiceover on. My old iMac is going on 10 years old now and I want to do some 4K and, you know, maybe work on my color correction a little bit better so I need a modern computer with modern editing software. Final Cut Pro 7 is no longer supported. Hasn't been in fucking 10 years. I'm probably going to get a new camera later this year too. Anyway, hopefully viewers won't notice and it'll be the same mediocre quality Knife SA films that they're used to with a little bit better color. Buy a t-shirt. Supports me. Designed a new one. No one has touched yet, which I don't blame them. It was kind of the idea. I mean, I kind of wanted to sell one, but, you know, it's supposed to be ugly. So I got that going for me. 
like, subscribe, comment. Thanks for watching.